All right, hello everyone. Um, so we have spent a lot of time solving quadratic equations. Uh, we, we use multiple different types of steps or, or ways we could solve quadratic equations. Now we're gonna start looking at the graphs that a quadratic equation produces. Um, we didn't talk about this a whole lot in the past, but what makes something a quadratic as far as an equation goes is the highest exponent is two. So we used to have like x squared plus 7x minus 2, for example. If you'll notice on this one right here, it doesn't have those things. It just has the x squared. But the fact that the highest exponent is 2, this is still a quadratic. And the graph we're looking at is actually called the parent graph of a quadratic. Why? Because there's nothing else added to it over here. So this is the basic graph for a quadratic. <clears throat> if you'll notice, it kind of looks like a U. Um, there are no arrows on this one, but realize that those would keep going on forever. So we get our bearings here. This is the x-axis right here, and this is the y-axis. All right, so we're going to talk about a few characteristics of these graphs. All right, the first one we're going to talk about is the vertex. And the vertex is simply, um, in this case, it's the very bottom of the graph. So it's right there. Another way to look at it is it's where the graph changes direction. So it's going down to here, and now it's going back up. There's the change of direction. Um, don't always look for it on the bottom because sometimes these parabolas are, they open down or they're an upside down U, okay? Now, this one's gonna be really easy because a lot of our answers are going to be the same because we haven't made any changes or we haven't put any information out here yet, but we'll get to something like that. All right, so the first thing is the vertex. So we're looking for that point right there, and it is a point, so we're gonna write our answer as a point. Well, that is at my x is zero, my y is zero, so there's my vertex. The axis of symmetry, hold on, let me find. The axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that goes through the vertex. So right there is my axis of symmetry. Basically, the axis of symmetry is this. It cuts the parabola in half. It mirrors on this side and this side. Or you can think of it, if I fold this piece of paper along that axis of symmetry, well, this part of the graph and this part of the graph would end up touching Again, they are mirror images on each side. The axis of symmetry splits it in half. Um, it is a line, it's an imaginary line. It's not really truly a part of the graph. That's why I put it in a dotted line, but we need to write it as an equation. And all you have to do is write x equals, and then find the x value that the axis of symmetry goes through, and it is zero. What you're gonna start to find out is the x value of your vertex and the number that goes here for my axis of symmetry will always be the same. All right, next is roots. Well, believe it or not, we've actually talked about roots before. In the past, all of the ones that we have solved, all the quadratic equations we have solved, what we were actually finding were the roots. <clears throat> so solutions and roots are the same thing. It's also the x-intercept. <clears throat> So we're finding, basically we're looking at this graph and seeing where it touches the x-intercept. Now I don't know if you remember this or not, but a couple days, weeks ago, whatever, we did what's called the discriminant. You remember we had the quadratic formula. We were trying, the discriminant was just the value underneath the square root. Um, so it looked like And remember, the discriminant was just that value right there, what those numbers gave you. Um, and we decided our possible answers were we could have two real, we could have one real, or we could have no real or, or two imaginary answers. Or, so on this one, um, if you'll notice, it only touches the X in one place, all right? and it's at zero, so my root is zero. So I, I know if I did the discriminant of this, 
I would end up equaling zero because when my discriminant equals zero, that told me I had one real answer. Well, there's my one real answer right there. <clears throat> we can get into that more later, but I just wanted to show you that that's how the roots and the solutions and the discriminant kind of all fit together. So next we need the y-intercept. So where does this graph touch the y-axis? Well, this one is also zero comma zero. Okay, we're gonna talk more about roots and discriminants on the next one, but let me flip the page. So this one was for x squared and that's it. That's all we're gonna talk about for now. All right, so here's our next one. Again, here's our x, x um, axis, here's our y. This graph here is for the equation x squared plus six x plus five. So now you notice we have some stuff over here. We have more numbers. We have a B, we have a C, and the graph actually moves, right? The other one was right here, just the Y equals X squared. Well, now these numbers here have made this graph shift to the left and down. So, but same concept, we're gonna look for our vertex. And I know these numbers are hard to tell, but this is negative two and that's negative four. So this line right here is going to be negative one and then this is negative four right here. So my vertex is at my, I'm sorry, this would be negative three. My X value is negative three. My Y value is negative four. So there's my vertex. So again, we're looking for the, the chain where the shape changes directions, right? It's coming down, now it's going up. There's the change. Next, we're gonna look for our axis of symmetry. Remember, that's that dotted line that goes right through the vertex. And we're going to write it as x equals. We've already said it's always going to be that number right there. Or you can look to see where it goes through the x-axis, and there it is right there at negative 3. So now let's look for our roots, or remember our x-intercepts, or our solutions. If I were to solve this, I know I would get two solutions because it touches the x-axis two different times, and there they are right there. So if I were to do the discriminant on this, <clears throat> I would get a positive number. Remember, a positive number told me two real answers, or two real solutions. Um, zero gave me one real solution, and then the last was a negative number, which gave us no real solutions, or, or two imaginary solutions, all right? So we know this one would have solutions, and there they are right there. So let's figure out what those are. Let's see, this is halfway between zero and negative two, so that would be negative one right there. And then this one's halfway between negative four and negative six, so that would be negative five. So again, all we're looking for is where it crosses the x-axis. I'm telling you about the discriminant just to kind of show you how it relates to our solutions, but we can get into that later if that's confusing you just look for where it crosses the x-axis for now and then finally we're going to look for the y-intercept where does this graph touch the y-intercept and this one is right there well if you can I don't know if you can see this but that's a four and that's a six so it's halfway between so it's going to be um zero comma five so that's it that's all we're going to look for on those so one more example, <clears throat> and let's get our bearings here. So this line down here is the x-axis, and this line right here is the y-axis. So there's my x, there's my y. Now we're looking at <clears throat> the graph for this equation right here, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 7. Let's find our vertex. There it is right there. And that looks like it's at, this is negative two right here. And this is three right there. So our vertex is negative two comma three. Okay, now let's find our axis of symmetry. Remember our axis of symmetry is an imaginary line that goes right through the vertex. We're gonna write it as X equals Remember, it's always going to be that number right there, or you can look to see where that axis of symmetry crosses the x-axis, and it would be at negative 2. Next, let's find our roots. Or remember, we called that our x-intercept. 
So where does this graph touch the x-axis? Well, it doesn't. It does not touch it. So there are no or no roots. There are none. It does not touch the x-axis. So I know if I were to do the discriminant for this equation right here, then my discriminant would be a negative number. Those numbers, you know, that part of the quadratic formula, that part right there, if I were to punch these numbers into this part of the formula, it would give me a negative number, so that tells me I have no roots. But if you'll notice, it does have a y-intercept. It does touch the y-intercept. It's between six and eight, so my y-intercept is 0, 0,7, and it's exactly halfway. I actually have little grid lines. I don't know if you can see them, but there's actually a line right here, and that's 6, that's 8, and this line's halfway between them, so that has to be 7. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's all we're doing right now, just kind of getting you all familiar with the characteristics of a parabola. Um, the next videos for, the, for what, on Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to see the parabolas are going to be turned upside down. They're going to be opening down and we're going to talk about what makes them turn upside down. So make sure you do your quick little worksheet on these um, and we will see y'all later.